Hi folks, it's David Kearns here with another With a Sharpie video. Uh, welcome back. Uh, been on hiatus for the last month or so uh, with the Christmas break, so glad to be back into it. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about a topic uh, as part of my Cleantech series, uh, which I kicked off late last year. Um, this time is on the idea of making biofuels, specifically making them from microalgae. Um, this is something that's had a lot of attention in the past, particularly in periods where uh, conventional fuels have become expensive, so when the crude oil price has gone high. Um, and I'll talk you through a few aspects of, first of all, uh, why would you want to make it? So, well, we'll start off with algae. So algae, it's a single-celled uh, organism. I'm not a biologist, so uh, take my word for that. Um, and what it can do is it can use photosynthesis in the same way that uh, other plants do uh, to convert sunlight into uh, chemicals, specifically sugars, and then converts those on into other chemicals. And so what algae can actually do is it can take uh, sunlight. So here's our sun shining, shines down on the earth. And we've got some algae down here, which is growing in like a individual cells, which of course multiply and divide. Um, these algae cells have a high lipid content. So lipid is another word for fat. Um, what that means is essentially they contain a lot of oil. Um, and depending on the species and so on, um, you can see uh, 50 plus percent oil. So uh, this is one of the reasons why microalgae has been so uh, of such a topic of interest for people who want to make biofuels is that uh, once you've got an oil, you can actually convert that into biodiesel, as we'll see shortly. Um, and biodiesel can be used in any diesel, diesel fueled vehicle, trucks or, or whatever it is. Um, so this is obviously something that people have been interested in because there's the capacity to take sunlight, uh, renewable energy, um, and convert that into oil and then ultimately into biodiesel. Um, so what are the steps involved? How, do you, how would you actually go about doing this? Uh, well, the first step is something known as cultivation. So cultivation is something we do with uh, crops, obviously, and food crops. Um, so this is where we grow algae. Uh, and how do we grow algae? There's two main ways of doing it, and I'll show you some pictures here in a moment. Um, one typical way of doing it is in something known as a, a raceway pond. Um, it's essentially a long, shallow uh, pool of water uh, where the water is kept moving with paddle wheels. Um, what that does is provides lots of surface area for the sun to shine on. Um, you seed it with a little bit of uh, the algae that you actually want to grow. Uh, the algae absorbs nutrients from the water, some CO2 from the atmosphere, um, and some sunlight energy and converts it into fats. Uh, raceway ponds are great, but they have uh, some disadvantages. The main disadvantage being um, that you can only grow, if I was to draw sort of a pool here, let's say I've got a shallow pool of of water, um, what you tend to find is if my water level is sitting here, uh, as the algae grow, what happens is, is that they grow near the surface where the sunlight is, and then they become opaque, which means that sunlight can't penetrate any deeper into the water. And so you tend to find is that any depth of water that's below um, a pretty shallow amount um, just doesn't get used for algae production at all. And so that's why raceway ponds are very shallow. There's no point having deep water because this water down here just, it won't contain algae. Um, and what that means is that generally speaking, you need a lot of surface area. So you need large, open, uh, quite flat areas uh, for raceway ponds. Uh, another approach is you might have what's known as a bioreactor. Now I'm not gonna get into the details of this other than to say these are constructed um, pieces of equipment that contain water with algae in it that enable sunlight to be contacted and usually they bubble through either air or um, enhanced with some extra CO2. They might collect CO2 from somewhere else. Um, bioreactors are more expensive. So bioreactors, uh, you, you have a lot more construction involved, they're more complex, um, but they can have much higher rates of productivity uh, for a given amount of, of space than a raceway pond. Uh, so that's the two sort of key ways of doing it. Um, so once you've cultivated some algae, you've grown some algae, uh, what we end up with at the end, typically, um, it looks really green. Like it looks like, wow, that water is absolutely full of algae. Um, but often it might only top out at maybe, you know, 1% uh, by weight. 
So that means for every, um, every kilogram of water that we have, we might only get 10 grams of algae. So it's actually still really, really dilute. And so the second thing we have to do is known as harvesting. So harvesting, you're seeing the terms here, cultivation, harvesting. Um, clearly there's some analogies here with agriculture more generally. Um, harvesting is also sometimes known as uh, dewatering, where we're trying to concentrate up this algae from 1% up to ideally the order of at least 50% concentration. Um, and so we can do things, there's, there's a range of technologies involved in doing that. Um, you can have things like um, uh, flotation, where you try to uh, get this algae all to clump together and float to the top and where you can skim it off. Um, you might have um, reverse osmosis, which is the technology that's used for um, desalinating water. And there's a whole host of other technologies out there. I won't get into those other than to say, this step generally consumes a lot of energy and that makes it expensive. And it's often one of the key problems uh, of making biofuel from microalgae um, is this harvesting step. So we can actually grow algae relatively cheaply, but this dewatering, this harvesting part is expensive. Okay, so um, because we just need to put in a lot of technology to get our algae up to a reasonable, um, a reasonable level. Um, the third thing we need to do is um, extract the oil. So I mentioned before that um, there's a lot of oil in this algae but it's locked away in individual cells, so an individual cell. Uh, so we need to extract the oil. Um, and there are different techniques. Um, we might have mechanical extraction, where essentially we, we subject the algae to, to mechanical stress and break the cells open. Um, there are also chemical means, uh, where we basically uh, break them open using um, uh, pH levels that the uh, algae can't tolerate. Uh, there's a few different ways you can do it. Uh, once you actually break those cells open, the fat then floats out into the water uh, and then we need to basically separate. So we need to separate the water and the oil. Um, this oil that we have at this point is uh, now oil that's actually ready to be turned into to biofuel. And the reason I say it has to be turned into biofuel is that you can't just take this oil that you've produced from this algae and put it straight into an engine. Um, like all vegetable oils or any sort of bio oils that are out there, uh, we need to do a conversion. And what's that conversion? Um, it's it's uh, the chemical term for it is transesterification. Uh, what that basically means is in, in very broad brush terms is fats are made up of things called triglycerides. So essentially there's a backbone of the molecule which is a hydrocarbon like material uh, called an ester. Um, it's got three glycerine molecules attached to it, so a triglyceride is where that comes from. What it does is it basically breaks the molecule into a hydrocarbon bit and a glycerine bit. And so what we get from that is we take our oil um, and we essentially we subject it to a catalyst. Um, and there are catalysts out there, you could use an alcohol um, uh, like methanol or ethanol. Um, and sorry, you also can have an alkali or an acid based catalysis. There's a whole you could do whole lectures on this topic, I won't get into the detail, but ultimately what we end up with is we end up with our biodiesel, which is the hydrocarbon bit, and we end up with glycerine. That's it in a nutshell. That's basically how we start with good old renewable sunlight over here and end up with biodiesel, which is our form of chemical energy that we're ready to use in an engine. And that's all well and good. Um, what are some of the issues with this? Uh, well, there's a couple of issues to think about. Um, one is the price. So if you want to make biodiesel, you have to compete with regular crude oil derived diesel that people are buying at the service station right now. Um, today in Australia, that's roughly $1.20 to $1.40, depending on the time of the week. Um, at the moment, uh, people have not had enough success in getting that price down. So it's not been competitive. So this is a question of economics and engineering, particularly at getting the costs of the cultivation and the harvesting especially down. Um, so there's some technology effort that's been going into trying to do that. Um, there's also an issue with, um, with land. And so you need a lot of land if you wanna cultivate with raceway ponds, um, or you need a lot of dollars for bioreactors, but often it's raceway ponds. Um, 
and you might not have access to land. Um, there's a few other issues out there as well. Uh, generally speaking, this biodiesel is compatible with existing diesel engines, uh, but there are potential issues around things like the um, components of the biodiesel settling out as solids in cold temperatures and things like that, um, that people have to deal with. So usually we use biodiesel as a blend with conventional diesel. Anyway, I hope this was a useful introduction for you into how we make biofuel from microalgae. Uh, this has been David Kearns with another With a Sharpie video. You have a good day.